Okay, Jordan, for today's shootout, please don't be mad, but I invited your twin brother, Gordon. No. Now, you know he loves black magic stuff I... and the occult and the dark arts and all that. So I can't nice. stand hey, that guy. Speak of the Chris? devil. Hey, Gordon. Jordan. Hey, Gordon. Nice jacket. Oh, you know what? You. Welcome back DP Review TV viewers. It's Jordan Drake here to take a look at a couple of external video recording options. Now, I've been using an Atomos Ninja 5 for years now. It's one of my absolute favorite video tools. But recently when the B-RAW update came to the S1H, Blackmagic was nice enough to ship me a video assist recorder. So I've been using that quite a bit and I kind of want to walk through what's going to be the better option for you. Now, fortunately or unfortunately in my case, uh, we were able to bring in my twin brother, Gordon Blake, who knows the Blackmagic stuff very well. He's going to explain some of the benefits of that system. We're going to walk through them, see what might be the best option for you. All right, today my weapon of choice is the Atomos Ninja 5 I've had for several years. It served me very well and it's quite inexpensive compared to some of the other options out there. Now, I do know Atomos just launched the new Ninja 5 plus but the only reason to look at that is if you've got a camera that shoots 8k video or 4k 120 otherwise you might as well stick with the ninja 5 since i'm using it on an s1h that's what i'm going to go with unlike penny pinch and jordan i got a top of the line black magic 7 inch video assist 12g the latest version now, if you don't want something quite this bulky, you can also get the five inch version of that, but you do sacrifice one of those SD card slots and I want all the SD card slots I can get. And you know what? I'm gonna win. <laughs> you know, mom likes me better, right? Well, dad likes me better. How do you know? All right, Gordon, let's talk about the physical differences of our recorders. And the Atomos Ninja 5, I would say, its design is utilitarian. I mean, it's not fancy. Uh, it's kind of plasticky, but that does definitely keep the weight down and it has everything that you need on it. We've got mounting points on the top and bottom of the recorder. We've got an HDMI in and output. Now, just remember that output's not gonna work if you do record ProRes RAW with this. On the other side, we've got a headphone jack, a microphone jack, a LANK input if you want to remotely trigger it. We've also got a power button that is, um, you know, it's recessed so you don't accidentally push it, but kind of tough to get to and you have to hold it for an unnecessarily long amount of time to turn on and turn off the Ninja 5. It's pretty annoying. On the battery, it's just regular Sony L-mount batteries, but you can add on attachments for that. So I can get an SDI adapter if I want to use this with some pro cameras like an FX6 or something like that. It's just very expandable, gets the job done, and again, lighter and way less expensive than yours. Okay, Jordan, the design of my Blackmagic Video Assist is just a totally different level, and it feels so much better built. I've got multiple mounting points right on top of the recorder here, and just so many more inputs and outputs, I and mean, you have to buy an expensive expensive SDI adapter, if you need an SDI connection, you know, I've already got that built on here. So when I show up on set, cause I'm on set a lot, I'm not just a YouTuber, Jordan. Uh, I can hook into pretty much any kind of professional equipment with this. I also have two three pin XLR audio contacts on this, still get a headphone jack and still get a LANK input. And you know what? I've got HDMI in and out as well. Okay, Jordan, I want you to take a close look here because you know what, we got two L-mount battery slots on my recorder, and that means security and redundancy. I mean, if someone bumps the battery on your Ninja 5 while you're in the middle of a clip, boom, you just have a corrupted video clip. You just lost that. Me, I have some safety here. It's just gonna quickly jump over to the other battery, uninterrupted, professional, like me, a professional. It doesn't end there because I've got a power button on here that's still kind of recessed, so you're not gonna accidentally push it, but nice and clicky, and I only have to hold it for a second to turn the recorder on and off. None of those irritating delays that you have to deal with all the time, Jordan. All right, Gordon, let's talk about our codex a little bit. And I mean, we're basically at an impasse here because both of our cameras can record multiple flavors of ProRes for most editing systems or DNX HD if you want to edit on an Avid suite. The big difference is my Ninja 5 supports Apple's ProRes RAW, which is far and away the most popular codec for mirrorless cameras right now. I know you're starting to see tiny little bits of B-RAW support in some of your cameras. ProRes RAW is much more widely supported, and I can drop it right into Final Cut, which is my preferred editing suite. Yeah, Jordan, we share a lot of those other formats, but you know what? 
B-RAW is just the future of compressed RAW recording. For starters, if you're really serious about the image editing on Final Cut, come on, everyone who really cares about picture quality is already working on DaVinci Resolve. It's the industry standard for grading. In the long haul, I think B-RAW is going to be the codec of choice, and my recorder supports it. All right, Gordon, next I want to talk about media, and that is a real difference and one where I think I've got a real advantage, because with the Atomos, I can just go grab any SSD, as long as it's fast enough to write video, and just drop it in the back plugs right in. It actually comes with a little caddy to make sure that it's on nice and securely when we're using that. The only drawback with that caddy is you kind of have it sticking out the back of the recorder a little bit. If you don't want something to bump that, you can actually grab an Angel Bird. They make SSDs size specifically for the Ninja 5. It's a little bit more money, but it's like a really elegant solution. <laughs> Not a really well thought out argument there, Jordan, but I wouldn't really expect any better from you because you got to drag around two types of media. You probably got SD cards in your camera, SSDs for your Atomos recorder, where with the Black Magic, it has SD card slots on the recorders. It actually has two with the seven inch, so I can have a backup. Five inch only comes with one slot, but then you're using the same type of media for your camera and for your recorder. Yeah, you know what, it's, it's going to be more expensive because you have to buy very fast SD cards if you're going to be using them with the Blackmagic recorder. But you know what, I have a USB-C slot in mind. So I can just plug an inexpensive SSD in there and get tons and tons of cheap storage. So your entire argument doesn't really hold any water. I've got a much more flexible media solution, which means I win this round as I expect to win many rounds in the future. Loser. Okay, Gordon, let's talk about our interfaces. And it's pretty straightforward because we both have touchscreen interfaces, which I like. I do honestly wish there were some physical controls on these. I mean, I remember the old video devices Pixie that had a touchscreen, but also some physical buttons on the bottom of the recorder. It was really nice, say, if you were wearing gloves, you could just have dedicated buttons for, like, record or punch it. But you know what? Neither of us have physical buttons, so we're both at parity there. I just have this touchscreen that is an excellent touch screen. I mean, it's super responsive, and I really like on the Atomos, everything is really colorful, it's really playful, we've got all these beautiful looking icons, just makes you want to get to work, it's fun. Video production is fun. Yes, you have a touch screen and it works and it's nice, but mine is just so much more elegant. It's based on the menu system from the Blackmagic cinema cameras, which everyone agrees are some of the best out there. And you have a bunch of weird icons, you have to try and remember what means what. Whereas with my Blackmagic, look at that. Everything is just nice, pretty intuitive text, super easy to read. I just think this is a better laid out interface and everyone who's used both seems to agree with me. Okay, Gordon, let's talk about the actual quality of the displays on these recorders, because you can just use these as a monitor, even if you're not planning to record externally. And considering that this is an over three year old recorder at this point, the specs still hold up really nicely. It's a thousand nits, you can use it as an HDR display or just plug it into your computer if you wanna see what your HDR grades are gonna look like. It does a really nice job and right out of the box, it was very color accurate. And I've had this for three years now and it still hasn't really drifted. You might not wanna talk about it, but I've noticed that your Black Magic Video Assist has a bit of a magenta cast. Okay, Jordan, stop trying to put lipstick on a thousand nit peg, because look at this. It's just a more modern, much brighter screen. 2,500 nits on this display, so when I'm out in the field, I can very easily see exactly what I'm shooting. Sure, you know, this particular unit might have a little bit of a color shift, but I'm sure that no one else out there is encountering that same problem. The display is a little bit pink. I mean, this is an easy category. I clean up. I win, buddy. All right, Gordon, so we've gone through quite a few categories, and yes, the Blackmagic Video Assist does have advantages in quite a few of those. But remember, my little Atomos here is less than what your model costs. And on top of that, it can do most of the same things. I and mean, it's still very capable. If you need a monitor, you want to record ProRes or DNX HD, you're really not going to see a difference. And which camera you're shooting with is going to determine what's going to be the better recorder for you in a lot of situations. And there's just a lot more support right now for the Atomos Ninja shooting ProRes RAW than there is for B-RAW and a lot of mirrorless cameras. So yeah, you have some advantages, but I think this is probably the better buy if you need to be flexible with a whole bunch of different shooting options. Okay, yeah, so a Ninja 5 might be like a really great value for, you know, like a hobbyist, enthusiast, amateur like yourself. But for a professional like me, and the Black Magic Video Assist 
is a tool that I can show up on big fancy sets, which I'm always on because I'm a professional, and know, hey, if you guys need SDI connections, it's okay, they're already on there. I can record to different media sources. I'm gonna have a really bright screen, so I'm set on a really bright day. I mean, an external recorder is a tool that I use all the time, so it's worth the extra money to know that it's a little bit better in a lot of different areas. But I'll be honest, Jordan, I, which recorder you should buy really is going to come down to what you're going to be editing that video on. As a fancy Resolve user, obviously I'm going to go with the one that will give me the option to record B-RAW, but if you're working with Final Cut, obviously the Atomos makes a lot more sense. On a camera like the S1H that can output ProRes RAW and B-RAW, we didn't really see a quality difference, so it's largely just going to come down to workflow. And of course, your budget. So hopefully you got something useful out of that despite him just gibbering on and on endlessly. I just want to say if you want to see more content from you know Jordan over there and his really cool friend Chris you should definitely subscribe to DP Review TV and we will see you all again. Well I won't because I'm Gordon but that guy will see you again very soon on TV Review TV. You know, man, I'm surprised. That was actually quite a bit of fun. I would totally come and co-host the show again with you sometime. Yeah, not f***ing likely. Why do I even ask? I could just kill him and steal his identity and host the show myself.